welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, the only way is Essex. Mark Gilchrist is in Britain's most glamorous county and he's after a big bag. We have news, we have kit, we have hunting YouTube and we have calendar. Are you feeling those end of Olympics blues? Well, we also have blue wildebeest in Africa. But first, sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam is hungry for a buck. The season started at the beginning of August. We join him with Andy Crow at the end of a day's pigeon shooting. A day on the rapes doubles is drawing to an end and Andy and Dom have clearly had too much sun. Both of course look incredibly cool. Someone said I look like brains on holiday. <laughs> They're very good, I have to say. I think I look a bit like Usher, only white. Do you know who Usher is, David? If only the film director Guy Ritchie were still auditioning for lock, stock and two smoking barrels. Time for some Chromo. Slowing the action down, we get a chance really to see the man and his quarry in action. Let's just have a look at one of those shots again. This one shows the massive shot and the plastic wad heading towards the pigeon. From this angle it looks as if the lead has all but passed the bird, but with the lead crow has given it, the pigeon eventually collides with shot. Things are definitely starting to cool down. The skies are emptying, however those that do get within range get crows full attention. This is a pretty tasty last one of the day. With 135 on the deck, Andy is reasonably happy and there's a lot of tidying up to do. Time is marching on. We have to leave him to it so we can cross to the other side of the farm to try and catch up with a possible fallow buck. Over the past few months, Dom has been writing about the work that goes into customising a rifle. His 243 has been given a makeover by Chris Blackburn at UK Gunworks. Okay, so my trusty Tika T3 243 is undergoing a bit of a transformation at the moment. Um, we're working with uh, UK Gunworks doing a kind of semi-custom build. So it's a uh, you know, custom rifles are very expensive. This is how to get good results on a budget. Um, we've been working with uh, Chris Blackburn up at UK Gunworks, his uh, bolt handle with the oversized uh, bolt on it, and we've got this amazing looking GRS laminate rifle stock, it's left-handed, which is it's quite difficult to get um, this kind of stock for a left-hander, but this is great, it's fully adjustable for height and uh, length of pull, um, which is great, it's got this wonderful angled pistol grip which just fills the hand perfectly um, and looks pretty cool as well I have to say. So we just started the build really, I had a trigger upgrade, um, a few cosmetic upgrades in the stock but we're also going to be doing the scope, we're going to be working up custom rounds, we're going to fit a moderator and upgrade the barrel as well um, and uh, reporting back on all the results in the magazine. So uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it so far. It is true that Dom's success rate with a camera in tow is more Mark Cavendish than Bradley Wiggins, but there's always a chance of a sprint finish with this man. And tonight he comes good. Just as we start making our way towards the high seat known as The Spencer, after TV presenter Phil Spencer shot his first ever deer from it, we drop to the ground. Dom has spotted what he thinks is a buck and a doe. Dom gets the sticks sorted and we gently rise to our feet to get above the grasses. Luckily, the little spiker is walking straight towards us. Sometimes 
things do work out. Dom would rather not take a straight-on chest shot, but this animal suddenly realises it's not alone, and there really is only one option. Dom shoots, and the buck runs into the crop. At this point, David would like to apologise for his camera work. It's not often he pulls a shot, that's more my style, but can someone please send Dom a moderator? I don't normally like to shoot them head on, but he wasn't going to give us another option. He walked down the right towards us and uh, he just about made us, you know, tried to let him come as close as possible. He sure had a safe backdrop, but uh, yeah, I had to put, it, put one through the front of his chest there. So he just dropped in the crop, which might make it interesting to find, but David's got a good nose on him. We look for a blood trail. The adrenaline has taken him 20 yards into the crop and he is a fantastic example of this beautiful deer. It never normally happens to us when, uh, when David and I are stalking together, but literally, as we, you know, so the wind was very much in our favour. We, we suspected they'd be out on this top bit in the crop, but for him to very obligingly graze his way down the path towards us and then present a, a shot was, uh, yeah. Not the brightest idea he ever had, but it certainly uh, certainly performed for the camera this time. But beautiful animal. I mean, Andy likes to to cull out as many of the the young bucks as possible. You know, it's a lovely animal. It's in great condition because it's been eating his corn. Um, but uh, ideal, ideal for us. And it looks like it's got good body weight, so uh, no doubt I'll be going down the game dealers. Um, yeah, very happy with that. Dom takes him to the edge of the crop to do the gralic for Crowman. It's pretty clear what he and the rest of the fallow herd are enjoying feasting on at the moment. See why the farmers aren't overly keen on uh, having a herd of fallow on their ground at harvest time. Not only do they trump all the flat, flat all the uh, all the standing crop, but they uh, they make a fairly good job of eating it too. Not a bad finish to a thoroughly sporting day. If you want to see Location, Location, Location's Phil Spencer stalking deer and shooting pigeons with Andy Crow right here, and you're watching this on YouTube, you can click on the screen that's appeared in the sky behind me. Now, from big bucks to small change, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The British equestrian team is heading for highest performing sport in London 2012. They collected three medals, including two golds. It surpasses shooting and archery, which did less well at this year's Games, with just one gold medal in Olympic double trap for Field Sports Channel contributor Peter Wilson. However, it did end Britain's 12-year Olympic shooting medal drought. Here's Pete with Prime Minister David Cameron. Even Sebastian Coe, who famously dropped the presidency of the National Pistol Association after the Dunblane tragedy, was keen to be photographed with the shooter. The good news is that Team GB's Olympic shooters are game shots and the equestrian team are fox hunters. The most exciting news to come out of the waters of Great Britain has nothing to do with London 2012. It has to do with the enormous fish caught by James Jones that may end up being the largest freshwater fish ever caught in the UK. The 31-year-old chef from Southminster was fishing Oak Lakes Fishery in Essex when something big hit his bait. There was speculation that this was the rumoured never-before-caught monster fish of the lake, and that speculation proved to be true when Jones landed the 144-pound catfish or wells. Unfortunately, it's been a record year for rhino poachers in South Africa. Since the start of 2012, a shocking 281 rhinos have been killed by poachers. The hardest hit regions are the Kruger National Park with 164, Limpopo 40, KwaZulu Natal 30, and the Northwest 26. Meanwhile, CITES has requested Vietnam to report by September 2012 on its actions to combat the illegal trade in rhino horn. Vietnam, which is the destination for much of the rhino horn smuggled from Africa, is to make an inventory of rhino hunting trophies and to verify their non commercial use. And finally, the Daily Mail has come down hard on the side of deer stalkers. Daily Mail writer Tom Mitchelson went out with Andy McLeish, executive chef at the Michelin-starred Chapter One restaurant near Bromley in Kent. 
They went to Dorset where the journalist shot his first seeker stag, cooked it and ate it. He reports it's enough to make 35 starters and 15 main courses. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Stay with us now for the map that matters and calendar. Welcome to Calendar, here with some important dates for the diary and seasonal reminders. The moon is waning gibbous and will by the middle of the month be dark enough to give you good cover for rabbiting and foxing outings. Planning your grouse shooting next week, the glorious 12th is on Sunday, but 2012 looks like it'll offer an inglorious 13th, as Moores reports too few birds to shoot. Best chances of a good day in August are east of the Pennines. West of the Pennines, the summer rain killed off many broods. The Angus Glens have survived better than most in Scotland. Invernessia is especially poor, says agents. The row rut is easing up and sea anglers have much to look forward to with reports of good sea bass catches in coastal waters all around the UK, especially in the West Country. Smooth hounds are also being caught in numbers on the South Coast. Some pigeon shooters are reporting a falling off in pigeon numbers after a promising start to the stubble shooting, but most say the birds are still to be seen in large packs as long as they're not being shot hard. That was this week's calendar. If you have an open day, try day, course, show or fundraiser, then why not talk to James and put yourself on the map? James at fieldsportschannel.tv Now, do you know your vultures from your vulturine guinea fowl? Well, we've created a couple of African bird and animal quizzes for you. Click on the wildlife quiz that's appearing there if you're watching this on YouTube and turn on your annotations. You get a few seconds of each animal and then you'll get the answer. Or click on this one for twitchers out there. It's the bird version. Now we're going to Africa and we're hunting blue wildebeest. It's already been a hot, busy morning in Namibia in search of game. We're guests of Zeiss Sports Optics, which has taken over Blaza's Snay Riviere Ranch. As part of the management plan here in Africa and part of Zeiss's marketing over there in Europe, Spanish Zeiss dealers have been offered a trip of a lifetime. They're allowed to shoot Oryx, Red Hartebeest, Zebra and Wildebeest, as long as it's with a Blaza rifle, Norma ammunition and, of course, some quality German glassware. As with any hunting, the added bonus is being able to see plenty of wildlife. But there is nothing that's going to feed the guests and staff or look good on the wall. Juan and Fernando are taking it in turns to hunt and there's already been some success with this oryx. But the day is drawing to a close, so once more we leave and head off in search of African game. Eventually we come across a young blue wildebeest bull. He doesn't stick around long and runs in front of us. Juan is used to driven game and gets a shot off as he runs in front of us. But this strong animal keeps powering on. And we need to make sure he is down because the sun is dropping and the one thing they won't accept here is lost game. We found blood. We are now tracking the game. Let's see where it is. Maybe we find it. Maybe we just need to get the dogs now at the moment. But the good first shots were quite good, so hopefully we find it immediately. The animal must be hard hit. He's spotted by the tracker and we race to keep up. A few hundred yards later, Juan puts the bull on the ground. Ole! Muy bien, muy bien Muy contento, muy feliz. Vale, so... So that's the first... Thank you. Thank you. Or blue. Wilder beast for him, and even though we had a little bit of run, we finally got him. And actually, I'm quite exhausted now because we were just running through the thick bush. Now we are here, and then, well, it's well done. Juan was using the new Blaza R8 professional success with the pistol grip, which seems to be one of those design concepts that just makes sense. This model here is with uh, thermoelastic inlays. 
and we also do a pimped up version of this one with um, some some leather inlays as you can see it's a thumb hole stock it's been used in the sports scenes for for many many years so if it's so successful in the sports scenes why shouldn't it also be successful for the hunter um, I personally have also switched to this model um, for the pure reasons for my self-confidence of, uh, of actually shooting from freehand. Uh, with this thumb hole system, my, my, my hand is actually in, into the rifle, so I feel more of uh, a connection and, and, and being a part of the rifle. Also another ad uh, advantage is that my finger is completely around the trigger. There's no sideways movement, so it's also a, a good aid against flinching. We're expecting this to live up to its name and to also be a success. Certainly Juan felt comfortable with the R8 on this young blue wildebeest. You can tell he's young by the distance between his horns. So when they become bigger and bigger, when it starts to close here that you cannot put your finger and they're really big trophies. So this is a young one. Of course, there are the all-important photographs, but it's vitally important to get this animal granix and in the back of the truck. Each of the staff here get three kilos of meat a week, as well as their accommodation and wages. And Juan will be adding to that pot when this handsome trophy is mounted and shipped all the way back to Spain. Now, likely as not, you won't get herds of wildebeest sweeping majestically across your garden, but if you do, you'll need the right kit to capture it. It's Kit Special. Introducing the Pulsar Digisight N750 Digital Night Vision, the much-anticipated updated version of the popular Digisight N550. This Digisight offers increased performance, digital push-button zoom, built-in infrared laser and an organic LED high-resolution display giving stunning performance and long-range viewing up to 600 meters in good conditions. Here's that zoom in use on a stuffed deer we found. Scott Country .co.uk, 1299 pounds, and Scott Country will throw in a free Pulsar EPS3 battery pack worth 84.95. That's it. Feast your eyes, fish into your pockets. If the website asks you, the promo code is Field Sports. Thanks for watching. This is Kit Special. Now it's congratulations to Game Chef Mark Gilchrist. He's been named by the Field Magazine as one of the top thousand shots in ten. the top ten. ten. You, you sure? Yeah. Well, let's see how it gets on in Essex. Marks in Essex, and when in Rome, you need big shades and a blonde on your arm. This one isn't head to toe in labels, but camo. There's no Gucci handbag, but there is a bag of birds. Essex birds. Many of you are now going weak at the knees at the thought. Yes, I know. Mark is alone in a field, and there's loads of pigeons. Fantastic. I'd say we've got 70 birds on the deck. I've shot very, very badly this morning. I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, which is the worst thing, because you can't correct it. I should think I've had 150 shots and probably got 70 birds. It's been a really tough time for those whose passion is their pursuit of the pigeon. Thankfully, things are looking up and Mark is ready for them. This fallen wheat is not going to be the farmer's most profitable crop, but he wants Mark to try and help conserve what he has left. Yeah. It's, it's lovely weather. We've got about 40 acres of laid wheat here. Uh, sadly, the farmer couldn't get the growth regulator on it and it's all gone on the deck. Uh, we're not that far from London, there's a lot of birds in the area, so we've got you know, very good conditions. So hopefully we should have a fairly big score. I think I'm going to shoot 500 shells today. Mark has been here for a couple of hours and has about 70 on the ground. He's brought his two dogs with him today to ensure all the birds are retrieved. However, many of the pigeons are dropping in nicely close to the whirly. God. What is wrong with me? Oh. The pigeon shooting is a welcome distraction for Mark as the wet summer has had a serious impact on business. You know, I'm a company that makes and sells game pies at game fairs when I'm not doing catering functions. I also do cooking demonstrations at game fairs. 
when all the game fairs are cancelled, I have no game pie sales and I have no money for doing cooking demonstrations. So my, uh, well, basically my wages this year are Up cut 20. down to by three quarters. So uh, if I earned four pounds a year, I'm now going to earn one pound a year. So it's all really quite devastating. What does pigeons pay? Uh, they just about pay for me. So I can shoot uh, 50 quid's worth of cartridges, so um, 250 shells. I, I average 100 to 150 pigeons. Let's just say 100. So uh, I will get, if we get 100 birds, I will get 80 quid for them plucked and dressed because I need to sell them wholesale. So that doesn't really pay. Sorry. It doesn't really pay. Rabbits pay for me because I shoot so many and I get, you know, £2.50 each for them. However, um, I'm not shooting very many of those at the moment because the crops are tall and uh, generally speaking you can't sell rabbits. I mean you can, but you don't sell the volumes, um, you know, in the summer months. So I'm stuck. With the crop sprayer getting closer, it's an opportune moment to move. The bird's flight line has changed and they're crossing over about 40 yards to our right. Mark makes the decision to shift over with a helping hand from Sam. The change of location proves successful. Maybe like Dom and Crow, it's all thanks to the eyewear. Are they proper shooting glasses? Pardon? Are they proper shooting glasses? Is that sarcasm, David? Yes, for the enormous paychecks I get from working with Field Sports Britain, I've gone out and bought, purchased top of the range shooting glasses. No, these are in fact a £10, slightly effeminate pair from the service station. But do you know what? I don't see what I look like while I'm here. And if I break them, I'm not going to care. And they stop the sun from hurting my eyes. Why, you know, other people, vanity drives other people to buy expensive sunglasses, I don't know. But, you know, it's just not, one of the faults I have is not vanity. Not vanity, but another fault I have is missing pigeons, especially easy ones like that. Mark's tally for the day is 265 for 502 shells. Now offering the sometimes woolly, always wacky, occasionally weird and definitely wonderful from across the world, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. We highlighted someone who shot 103 pigeons last week. Viewer E.M. Jackson was disappointed, so recommends this from US company Saw No More, who calls 103 a bad day and enjoys bags that reach 700. Here is Saw No More's Pigeon Hunting Highlight Reel 2. Some shooters positively revel in small bag pigeon days. Here is Big Sai 66's Pigeon Shooting with 17 Rem. He is out after Mac and shoots this single pigeon at more than 200 yards, taking careful account of holdover, windage, and if you wondered, putting 25 grain Hornady VMAX with 22.2 grains of N135 fed 205M primers and neck turned fully prepped RP brass through a new LW barrel, which he is currently shooting sub 0.25 MOA. If you find that unsurprising, you will not be moved by this film from Leroy Jones 76, sent in by viewer Lee Mulcock. Fishing for ducks shows how to retrieve the duck you shot, which landed on a frozen lake. Best bait for dead ducks, says Leroy Jones 76, is a hook tied with a strip of mackerel feathers. On the fishing front, our occasional cameraman Nicky Brown's fly fishing YouTube channel TechSec Media this week shows a good method for filleting a trout without gutting it. Worth a watch. Staying with angling, let's get pelagic. OK, so you may not have walleye in your pond, you may never have come across crankbaits and lead corn may sound to you like a heavy metal fanzine, but there is actually lots for anyone to learn from Cabela's latest upload. This week on the water, lead core trolling for deep walleye. And look out the British gun and tackle trade. Cabela's is the future. Here is a good use of YouTube and that's showing off the finished gun dogs you have for sale. These are the latest from Altaquin kennels, from Irish and British working bloodlines and every good gun dog trainer should be able to play tennis. Back to shotguns. I have been rude about the work of UK01 Edmund but I take my hat off to his sporting clays for different methods of obtaining leads. It's a good instructional video. All it needs now is our man's rich Yorkshire brogue to tell the viewer what's going on. Now much is made 
afraid of the new wave of comic talent coming out of YouTube at the moment. Viewer Neil Hawkins sends in this American film called The $300 Bullet. Thank you, Neil. It is compelling, but it is barely comic. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now, the great thing about these hunting YouTube films is if you've missed them, you can click on this little link up here and you can go and see them. They're here to stay. We are back next week. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button, which is arranged as a series of squares just there, or go to our shows page, www.youtube.com slash show slash Field Sports Britain. Some people have been complaining that if they subscribe to the whole channel, they get all sorts of little bits and bobs. If you want to watch just this programme, go to our shows page. Or you can go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, or scroll down to the bottom of the page. There's a, a form there, pop your email address in there, and we will contact you with news of our programme, which is out 7 o'clock every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. <laughs>